What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to balance your exposure. I am first going to show you a chart. I'm going to teach you the theory. Then we'll look at some of the pictures. Now, please understand, I am not teaching how to set the exposure. I've already made a video on that, which is my manual exposure video. Look for the link for manual exposure video. In this video, I am showing you how to balance the exposure so you can have the correct setting and you know what kind of setting should you go for it, uh, depending on what kind of depth of field you want okay so it's gonna be a long video probably a lot of numbers some basic math uh, bear with me if you don't understand this in, in the first attempt um, please watch it over if you understand this concept you will go from an amateur to advance amateur and basically eventually a professional photographer. If you don't understand this concept, things are going to be very difficult for you well, to, to shoot correctly, basically. All right. So this is an exposure chart. Here's the aperture chart, shutter speed, and ISO, ISO chart. Now, aperture is where people struggle. Shutter and ISO chart is very easy to understand. And this is one full stop. Later, I'm going to teach you how the one third stops work. But if I were to add one third numbers in there, it would be so difficult for most people to understand. So that's why I'm doing one stop increment. Okay, so ISO 50. If you double that, it would be 100. If you double that, it would be 200. And you see the pattern. This is one stop. You know, from 50 to 100 is one stop. From 50 to 200, is two stops okay and from 50 to 400 is three stops from 200 to 400 is one stop okay shutter speed very similar pattern this is the only exception right here okay you're gonna double okay one second exposure half second exposure so if you go from half second to one second you're doubling your time and that is one stop if you go from one fourth to one second exposure, you know, that's double right here from one fourth to half and from half to one. That is two full stops. Okay. And you see the pattern right here. If you go from one fifteenth to one thirtieth, you're decreasing the shutter time by one full stop. So everything is the same except one twenty fifth. Um, if you go from 160th and if you double that, it should be 120th, right? But it's not. It's 125th. And after this, you follow the same pattern. Double of 125th is 250, which is your one full stop. From 125th to 500 is, is two stops, three stops, four stops, okay? And then, you know, beyond 4,000 is basically one eight thousand of a second is another full stop. Aperture is the only tricky part because there's no pattern here, but it's very easy to memorize. In the beginning, I struggle, but I know these stops by heart now, okay? I know, and I don't know if you noticed, but my settings are very much, I am on full stops because it's much easier for me to calculate them, you know? Um, if I am at F4, you know, one full stop of extra light would be 2.8, so from f4 to f2.8 is one full stop of more light okay from f4 to f5.6 is one less stop of light so this part is very easy to understand people sometimes struggle when they have to sort of mix them together you know um, all three elements of your exposure by the way flash power is exactly the same one full you get full power that's one stop less power another stop less power another stop less power and in flash you also have one third stops like 0 0.3 0 0.7 and then you get the full power okay so let's let's look at balancing the exposure let's say you are taking a picture at at a at a at f8 one thirtieth of a second iso 100 
100. Most cameras don't have ISO 50, by the way, so don't consider this as as of right now. D4 has ISO 50, I believe, and D800, I believe, has ISO 50, but most cameras don't. I'm, I'm pretty sure Canon high-end flagship models, I'm sure they will have 50 ISO. So let's let's concentrate on this area here. Okay, let's say you're taking a picture at F at F8, 130th of a second, ISO 100. All right, if it's 130th of a second, chances are, and if you're shooting handheld, chances are it's going to be blurry. So how do you balance your exposure? How do you how do you get over the minimum shutter speed um, and get you know sharp pictures? Well, it's not going to happen at f/8. So you're going to have to open up your aperture from f/8 to f/5.6. When you do this, your shutter speed will increase from one thirtieth of a second to one sixtieth of a second. Now you will get relatively sharper image. And if you go from f8 to f5.6 your shutter speed will go to 125th why is this happening well you're you're letting more light in here and to balance the exposure meaning to keep the same exposure your shutter speed will increase it is literally that simple i'll give you another example let's say you're shooting an a, a, a landscape at F F4, okay, and your shutter speed is 1,000 of a second. What is wrong with this picture? At F4, 1,000 of a second. Well, you should not do landscape at F4. Your shutter speed is telling you there's plenty of light. So you go from F4 to F5.6. Your shutter speed will drop to 1 500th of a second. Why? Because you're blocking light now. So your shutter speed will decrease. You go from f5.6 to f8, your shutter speed will, will decrease to 1 to 50th of a second. And you go from f8 to f11, your shutter speed will decrease to 1 25th of a second. So if you're doing a landscape at f4, 1,000 of a second, that is not right. You know, you have enough room here to shoot that landscape at f8 or f11. Okay, and that is how you balance the exposure. Um, I'm going to copy paste this chart in my description, and you can save it on your Word document if you want. If you uh, like, if you want to go over it um, after you're you know done watching the video. Let's take a look at a couple of pictures um, and see what I just taught you makes sense or not. Okay, uh, let's see what the setting is. F9. One two thousand of a second, ISO eight hundred. So right off the bat, you know that your ISO is really high. Okay. So what's gonna happen if you go from ISO eight hundred to ISO four hundred? Cut the speed in half. Okay. ISO eight hundred and four hundred and one full stop. So if you are going to uh, decrease the light by one stop. Same thing is going to happen with your shutter speed. Your shutter speed is also going to decrease by one full stop, which would be 1,000 of a second. Okay, We just went over this. From 2,000, it will go to 1,000. Okay, From 800, if you change to 400, your shutter speed will drop from 2,000 to, to 1,000. Let's look at the second picture and see what the setting looks like. You'll notice, let me, hold on. The exposure is, is the same, okay? The exposure is almost, well, it is the same. I mean, if the, if the tree is moving a little bit, you know, shades are gonna be slightly off, but exposure is the same, but look at the settings here. You went from ISO 800 to ISO 400, and it affected your shutter speed from 2000 2000 okay so ideally you don't even want to take this picture at ISO 400 so if you go from 400 to 200 ISO your shutter speed is going to get cut down to 1 500th of a second just like the exposure chart says that it's going to do okay so whenever you're doing landscape shots 
and you are shooting at f4, let's say, or f5, 5.6, and your shutter speed is really high, that's a sign that there's a lot of light. A, reduce your ISO, and B, uh, it's 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 going to slow it. It's going to reduce your shutter speed. But as long as you're above your minimum shutter speed, you are going to be fine. Okay. So don't take landscape shots at f4, or you know even at a high ISO. The only time you're going to use a high ISO if there is no light. Okay. If the shutter speed here was one one twenty fifth of a second, that's a big sign that there is not a lot of light. So in a, in a case like this, yes, you can increase your your ISO. Let's take a look at a couple of more pictures. Um, here's another picture. All right, what does this picture tell you? F 2.8, 2,500th uh, of a second, okay? So that's telling you that there's a lot of light. Should you shoot this at f8, f9? No, you should not. Simply because you're looking for shallow depth of field. You you want to blur the background. That's why you shoot this at f2.8. So remember when you know the the shooting at f8, f f9, f11 rule applies when you're doing landscape. But when you're doing portraits, it doesn't matter how fast your shutter speed is you're basically just killing the light because you're shooting at bigger aperture okay um, here's another picture you should my shutter speed is probably gonna be fast in this picture as well one eight hundredth of a second which is fast so there's no there's no reason you need to reduce the shutter speed down you're shooting wide open and that's why your shutter your, your shutter speed is 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 fast okay so sometimes Here's a mistake I made. Let me show you. All right. My ISO is high and my shutter speed is also high. ISO 500, my shutter speed is 500. Now you're probably getting confused because in the chart it doesn't say 500 here. It's 400, right? But it's because my camera can do one third increments. I'm going to show you a video how one third increments work, okay? It's it's very very simple. So in a case like this, my ISO should have been lower because my shutter speed is fast at, at ISO 500. So if I were to reduce my shutter speed from 500, I'm sorry, my ISO from 500 to 250, my shutter speed will also decrease from 1 500th of a second to 1 250th of a second. And that's how you basically just balance the exposure like you have to keep this you, you have to keep an eye on your shutter speed and your ISO constantly to make sure your ISO is not too high for your portraits um, and even for your landscape shot as long as there's enough light you can do that now if there's not a lot of light then you have to increase your ISO in a picture like this All right. In a picture like this, look at my shutter speed. It's already kind of slow, 1 one, one uh, 25th of a second, and I shot this at 3.5. But look at my ISO. I have to increase my ISO just so I can get at least 1 1 250th of a second, 1 1 25th of a second shutter speed. So sometimes you have the light, which allows you to reduce your ISO or pick smaller aperture like f8, f9, but f9. But sometimes you don't have that luxury. So in a case like this, you have to increase your ISO just so you can get over your minimum shutter speed. Let me play that uh, video where I talk about one third stops. All right, so let me show you how one third stop increment works. Some cameras have this capability. You'll have to go in your menu to set this it's not going to be default uh, d7000 has this i'm pretty sure 7d is gonna is gonna have it uh, i'm not sure if 60d will have it or not you'll have to check if your camera can change the stops in one third increments all right so how does this work well iso 400 if i want to go from iso 400 to 200 
in one stop it's like this right but you notice that there are other numbers in the middle there's 320 there's 250 and then there's 200 so let's just reverse it so we'll make it easier if you want to go from 200 to 400 one dial is one third stop another dial is 320 which is two thirds stop and then one more which is one full stop 400 so basically it's every third that will give you one stop let's let's do that with shutter speed okay 100 shutter speed right the double of that would be 200 but it's not gonna go to 200 directly it's gonna go to one third two third and then 200 which is your full stop same thing with your aperture okay look at your chart uh, that I that I posted pause the video if you have to from f4 to f5.6 is one full stop so if you change the aperture one third two third one full stop once again not every single camera has this option how does this help you well this helps you that if if the lighting is uh, trick no, I don't want to say tricky but it just gives you more control over your exposure you know sometimes at ISO 400 it's not quite there so instead of going from 400 to 800 you can just go from 400 to 500 and still keep decent quality you know but the cameras who don't have full stop uh, um, one third stop increments they'll have to go from ISO 400 to ISO 800 so that can add a lot of noise so one third stops just gives you more control over it as far as calculating the math is exactly the same one stop will always be you know half of this if you wanna go you know 400 or if you are at two let's say you're at 500 ISO one full stop of this if you wanna decrease the ISO would be 250 All right one two third attempt third dial basically it will give you 250 so even though you're doing one third stops but it's still you can still do the simple math and get you know go from 500 ISO to 250 which will be one stop so there you go guys it's a lot of information and I'm pretty sure some people are confused right now it's very important that you understand this concept uh, I'll give you an example here's a picture right here f4 low iso f4 200 1 8 tenth of a second your camera is not going to tell you hey increase your f-stop you know your camera is not going to tell you all your camera is going to do is give you a clue the clue is that your shutter speed is really fast and you need you have more room here to pick smaller aperture 5.6 7.1 f9 f11 and that's why it's, it's important to understand this concept because if you don't understand this concept you will always shoot in semi-automatic shutter you know shutter speed will be picked for you by you know camera will pick that for you but you're not going to get the right depth of field because you don't know that there's a lot of room here for you to pick f7.1 or f8 there's plenty of room here you can even increase your ISO if, if, if uh, light is not enough so that's why it's very important to understand how you can balance the exposure and how much room you have to work with you know should you open up your aperture when you're doing portraits should you increase your ISO or should you decrease your ISO so these are some of the important things it's gonna take some time obviously it took me I would say at least six months to really uh, not only understand this concept but it, it became second nature to me now sometimes you know we're all human sometimes you make a mistake sometimes you have the time to make those changes sometimes you don't you know picture like this I did not have the time to change my my ISO from 500 to 250 because you know everything was happening really fast you know especially when kids are moving around it's okay to make a mistake but you know but when you do have the time where you can change the settings, you should always do that. Okay? So I hope I did not confuse you guys. If you need help, uh, let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll answer your questions. All right?
Talk to you guys later.